Hey, it's Joel. What if you could print with PETG, but not have so much moisture problems, right, John? Right. This is John, 3D Fuel, and we're here to talk about the wonderful material that is PCTG. Now, when I came to you and we started to, to talk about this, I was like, PCTG, PC, it's polycarbonate, but it's not, right? So PCTG, it's a copolyester similar to PETG. I believe the chemical name is polycyclohexylene dimethylene terephthalate glycol. Polyhexacycline? Polycyclohexylene dimethylene terephthalate glycol. Nailed it. Oh, well, I know what the glycol is. Right. I know with PET materials, you have the glycol to make it a little bit easier to print. Correct. Same thing with this? Yeah, very similar. Okay, yeah. but it has PETG properties, right? I would say it's more like PETG on steroids. So. Oh. Okay. Better impact toughness, better layer to layer adhesion. So in some tests, you don't get quite isometric strength, you know, Z axis as yeah. strong as X and Y, but you get close, it's better. Um, so definitely gonna be better than PETG in that regard. Okay, well, a lot of people like to print with PETG. Yeah. I mean, you know, you, you have the beginner material, PLA, 3D fuel, fuel obviously has lots of it, but when you, when you graduate to that PET, PETG material, you're, you, you feel like almost like superhuman with some of the things you can do, right. but it has a failure mode that is catastrophic. Oh no. And so PCTG then alleviates that problem? Right, so I mean, P, PCTG will eventually, like all materials, break, but when it does break, its failure mode isn't that, you know, that fracturing, that shards, it's just, it's not as under high stress or high tension, so it doesn't, Oh. split or cleave quite so dramatically. Oh, okay, so you can you can make things such as this is an orthotic, right? Or yeah, a, or it's, a, it's a check socket. Or, it's, yeah. it's a socket. One of the things that fascinates me about the material when used for prosthetics is that it, like it looks cool, yeah. but I'm when I'm feeling it, it doesn't, it doesn't have the same feeling of PETG. Like it feels very, it has, it's more ductile, it's right? It's more ductile, yeah. So, so what's another property that's good that this carries? So chemical resistance, that's going to be another very important thing. So it has much better chemical resistance against alcohols, ethanols, sanitizing chemicals. PCTG is not a new material, no. but it's new-ish to the 3D printing industry. Traditionally, it's been used for medical device manufacturing because it can help stand up to the sanitization process by sanitizing chemicals, much better longevity. It doesn't cause brittleness quite, uh, quite as readily. Huh. And also water bottles because it's a non-toxic material. It's BPA free. It doesn't leach anything into, you know, into water. So it gets used quite a bit for, uh, you know, for that. Well, here, let's, let's take this trash as an, sure. can I take yeah. this? Oh, yeah. Go for it. Go for it. Can I dump it out? Absolutely. Oh, that was less dramatic than I thought it was going to be. <laughs> Lame. This is a single wall, yep. PCTG, and you brought this here how? Uh, it was kind of smashed in my luggage. It had, had had some socks in there to kind of provide uh, dunnage, oh, that's but that was, that was about okay. it, yeah. But as a, as a, as a single wall print, a PETG, you you would not be doing this. No, like you would. This would not be something you could do. This is amazing. Yeah, we have some customers that are using it in lieu of a higher durometer uh, TPU material. So using it as a flexible material, almost. Uh, it also has exceptional compression strength. For, so using it for gaskets paired with its uh, its uh, ethanol and alcohol resistance, they're using it in oil and gas instead of going and having a custom gasket material cut. That is fascinating because normally when we think of Gasket material, we think of a flexible thermoplastic right. elastomer, but to use a, a rigid material, but to make it, but still get some of the properties, that, that seems really advantageous. Right. Now on the flip side of that, we have customers that are replacing cold rolled steel parts with this material because of its compressive strength. So they were using a very simple part, right? What? Just a just a wedge. Okay. So basically, you know, think of a shim to hold something up, but they were having to place orders for that weeks in advance, waiting for that part to show up. Now with this, they can 3D print that part on demand and it has the bonus advantage of being lighter weight. That's amazing. One of the questions though, if we talk about multi-tool 3D printers like the Prusa XL or like the Bamboo Lab, Max Curies and the H2, you know, all of those, right. anything that can print with more, when, more than one material, will it stick to other things? Like, yes. you know, for live joints in prints. Right, so it will stick to PETG very well. Now, what it won't stick to is PLA. Okay. So using PLA as a support structure for PCTG or vice versa, the one caveat to that is it needs to go through a different tool head. So you wouldn't want to uh, use PLA okay. as a support material for PCTG with an AMS, unless you're talking the H2D, for example. Oh, because or using the, the two nozzles. XL. Because otherwise what will happen, because they have different melt flow indexes, the PLA will coat the PCTG as it's being extruded, which would, leak in, or would weaken the layer to layer bonding. The episode where we had the Bamboo Lab H2D, we actually talked about how having two nozzles works great for those multi-material sort of applications. 
I find it really cool to think about having PLA on one nozzle, yeah. PCTG and PETGs in an AMS on yeah. the other, and making something that takes advantage of this material's properties, but still utilizing the materials that people know. That's a good idea. Is there a reason why we aren't using this more? Because this seems like it has great material properties and it, it's printable and you get to do things like this. Why, right. why aren't more people using this? People haven't known about it. Think back to, uh, to build plate surface materials, right? PEI, great build plate surface yeah. material. PEI is not a new material, but its application in build plates was really okay. only about half a decade ago. Okay. Uh, before then, it was blue painter's tape and hairspray oh, I remember. on glass. Oh yeah, I still got that can of hairspray. Okay, well, what's the cost of this material? So for a one kilogram spool, it is $39.90 okay. from, uh, from 3D Fuel. So part of the reason for that cost, there is R&D that goes into this. For example, we build out print profiles for our materials. We also have this available in 35 colors. That's not a small 35 thing. Colors. 35 oh, colors? 35 okay. colors. And some of are, those are colors, these PCTG here? Yeah, all, everything here is PCTG. So these, these are, are gorgeous. Yeah, these are our four newest transparent colors of PCTG. I do like the blue. Yeah, of course. Yeah. It's, it's yeah, very, I like the blue. I mean, blue is a great color, especially yeah. on you. So <laughs> the, the four colors, so this is our transparent lime green, transparent ultra, ultramarine blue, signal orange, and ruby red. And the ruby red, as you can see, it's just... That's nice. I mean, it is a great, it's just a fantastic color. Just nice, deep red. But to make those colors, and to have them work well with PCTG, you have to have it made specifically for PCTG. And there's not a lot uh, of, okay. there, you can't get an off the shelf PCTG colorant where it's going to work well with the material. There's a cost to that. Yeah. Oh, and, 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 and you're developing colorant, it. Yeah, and these coloring companies that we work with, we work with US companies because we want to have consistent colors. So looking back at our PLA line, a spool of PLA that we manufactured 10 years ago, the color, that same color we manufacture today, you shouldn't be able to tell the difference. Really? Yeah, and that type really? of consistency has a cost. Have you, have you it. tested that? I haven't been able to find a 10 year old spool. So <laughs> if anyone has a 10 year old spool of 3D fuel PLA, please let us know. I'd love to, you know, I'd love to put that to the test. So the colorants that we talk about, uh, you have to develop those, and I, there is an added cost. But I see parts here with carbon fiber, so yes. you can CF load and and glass fiber. Like, yeah. can you load? So yeah. it can, it can have those structural parts in it to to kind of help with the, the coloring or the printability, right? right? So we have two, two materials that, um, so this is actually our matte black Pro PCTG. So we use carbon fiber as a mattifying agent. So that's what allows the light to refract and really do a good job of hiding the layer lines. It's about a 4% carbon fiber. 4%, load. like this is, it's staggering how good this looks. Yes, so low carbon fiber percentage that it's gonna make it easier to print. It is helping to keep the cost low because carbon fiber has a cost yeah, to putting does. it into yeah. anything. Yeah. So that's for more aesthetic purposes. And then we're coming out with a true carbon fiber loaded PCTG for the more mechanical purposes. Oh. We're testing two different variations right now. We may even have uh, that finalized by the time this video comes out. And oh. I'm hoping to have it ready for sale by the time we get to Rocky Mountain Rep Rap Fest 2025. Okay, that'll be fantastic. All right, last question. I know we've kind of deep dived here. We've, we've talked a lot about PC. I've talked more about PCTG with you right here than I think I have before, like yeah. this has been the most. And I'm really thankful for this education because it sounds like this should be a material that more people are using. Yeah, absolutely. Now, just like because you have a hammer doesn't mean everything turns into a nail, PCTG is gonna have really good use cases. So snap fits, for example, are excellent. They're gonna okay. have better. So for example, the dummy 13 model. You have a lot of experience with the dummy I 13. I do, yes. And this works better than PETG does for those snap fit joints, and they're going to hold up longer. One, that increased oh, ductility, right. less likelihood of the joints breaking as you're assembling, uh, assembling it together, and it's going to last longer. So it's not going to sand itself down the way that uh, PETG might, or especially a basic PLA. I mean, uh, it's why they recommend yeah. not Yeah, not I've, I've that. seen that. Well then, okay, if this is 4%, if you have a 10 to 15% CF load, are you still gonna maintain the same ductile properties? No, you're gonna have greater stiffness. It's gonna have still really good impact toughness, but it's not, you're not gonna be sitting there. Right, doing okay, this. That's, that's what I was thinking. Yeah. But it has in, increased layer adhesion. Mm -hmm. And I know if you adding CF or anything in there can compromise it, you know, de depending on the, the material and the, the, the length of the right. fiber and all of right. that adding the CF isn't going to compromise the properties of the material. You're still gonna get great performance, right? You're still gonna get great performance. Now I do wanna be very clear, like 
yes, adding carbon fiber to a material is going to impact layer to layer strength. Yeah. So it's going to go down slightly, but it will still be better than the layer to layer bonding you're going to have on a similarly carbon fiber loaded PETG. Yeah, there we because go. Because of the inherent yeah. properties of the PCTG. I'm excited to print with this. Yeah. Like oh. this, this is going to be fun. Giddy up. If, if someone's not ready to commit to a full kilogram of PCTG, we also have 50 gram coils available in all of our colors. So if oh. you want to just try a material out, 50 grams, that gives you enough to honestly print a dummy 13. Well, uh, John, like I said, this has been enlightening. I'm really excited about this. I can't wait to try this at home on the machines that I have. But what I want you to do is look in the camera right there and tell everybody where they can go to find out more about PCTG and 3D Fuel. Yeah, honestly, 3dfuel.com, no hyphen, just 3dfuel.com. All right, well, thanks for watching. If you made this far, you're awesome. Don't forget to hug each other more, fight for cause you believe in, print more PCTG. And as yeah. always, high five. Come on. High five. Ooh, yeah, that's a good one. Crisp.